preconditions to it. Like I remember years ago, I received in the mail, um, it was a junk mail, but um, on the outside it said, you're pre-forgiven. <laughs> Open up to find out how, you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh, maybe there's something for my book in here, you know. So I opened it up. It, it, you know, it, it was a pitch for auto insurance. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we've all seen this. And of course, it's a misuse of the word for. They're using forgiveness in the insurance sense. You know, you get your first fender bender. We're not going to raise your premium. But second or third one. You know, it's three strikes and you're out, you know. So that involves a, a conditional forgiveness predicated on, you know, you only get so much, you know. Um, but, you know, the, the same is with waiting for someone to apologize. I'll forgive you if you get your act together. I'll forgive you if you make amends and restitution um, to me. You know, I'll forgive after you've been hit by the karma bus. Um, you, ever, you ever hear that expression before? You know, somebody, um, which, which is in a sense saying, you know, I'll forgive you after I think that justice has been done to my satisfaction. And I saw a cartoon once, and it was a bus stop. And it said karma bus. And the person was waiting. Of course, they were a skeleton covered with cobwebs. You know, we could be waiting for a very, very long time. And of course, we end up hurting ourselves in the process. But also, somebody back there, that's still codependent. That's giving somebody complete power over us. You know, my actions are going to be predicated upon what, what you do. You know, um, and so, yeah, um, people shouldn't apologize before, but that brings us back to the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Oh, that's conditional forgiveness. God's not going to forgive us until we forgive the other person. So if God can give us conditional forgiveness, why can't we extend conditional forgiveness to others. Right? It's only fair. Anyone want to comment on that? Yes, please. Well, God's forgiveness is forever offered. It's a matter of how, whether we choose to receive it or not. Yes. So, in a sense, we have been forgiven, but in a sense, as you said, we can... God's forgiveness is a free gift, and the recipient can either choose to accept it or refuse it. Um, our holding on to resentment is, in a way, inhibiting us from receiving the grace and the forgiveness that God wants to give us. Uh, an, an image I was given at a talk I gave, uh, was another little gem, was, he says, it's like God's grace and forgiveness is like what's going on outside right now, you know, this deluge, this downpour. And when we choose to hold on to resentment, um, it's like we have a big golf umbrella, and we put it up. God's forgiveness, His grace is, is raining all around us, and we're not allowing ourselves to be soaked with us, uh, with, with that. Now, God, at the same time, knows that we, we, forgiveness can be a lifelong process and that we have a lot of feelings and pain to deal with. He knows our human condition. Um, and I think, I think what he asks of us is to, best we can, to engage in the struggle and the process because there's always grace in the struggle. But it's not a question of, God is not going to forgive you unless you forgive so and so, right? That, that's, a, that's a rather, um, that's an unhelpful way of looking at it. It's like you're, you're inhibiting yourself from being the person, receiving the grace and forgiveness God wants to give you because you are remaining stuck. So it's not a question of God wants us to give unconditional forgiveness while his forgiveness to us is conditional. Okay? Um, and I... And I say this because I've read 
And I've heard homilies, and I've heard them preached by bishops, where they say, God will not forgive you unless you forgive the other person. Uh, and actually, um, I, I'm, I'm still not getting it. Could, could you expand it a little more? So which part of this is, so forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And some, so, so which part? Uh, yeah. Okay. Some people think that that means that God's forgiveness is conditional. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, yes, okay, so which part of it doesn't seem conditional to you? So, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not a question of God isn't going to extend forgiveness to us until we do something. It's our choices are, are inhibiting our receiving the gift he wants to give us. God... God forgives us unconditionally. It's a question, as, as Brad said, of us accepting it and receiving that gift. But I'm a little puzzled about how you get that out of that, this phrase. Well, first of all, it's English, not Greek. Okay. <laughs> okay that, yeah, okay. That, that yeah, be, yeah. Be there, there are, okay. yeah, yeah. And every English translation okay. is in some way compromised. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's we don't want people our whole faith is predicated on the fact that God loves us unconditionally. Yeah. Right? Forgiveness is an expression of God's love. And if God's love is unconditional, then his forgiveness is unconditional. It's it's a question of whether we are open to receive it and making the choice, you know, to be to, to remain seeking retaliation and revenge inhibits us from receiving that gift, just like having the big golf umbrella while the rain pours around us. Even Jesus said, Lord, come, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, so, I, and I use that a lot when I can't take what somebody's doing and to give it to him. Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I think that's a, a way of, um, of letting go the, and not just, I don't think it's pushing it against the wall, it's not accepting it. Mm -hmm. And God's mercy and grace is greater than the choices we make. I think it's, it has to do with the parable, to me anyway, the, the gratitude that we should experience, like the rain falling on us, the gratitude that he forgives us. So it's the rich man who, who, um, who the, the man who's in debt, right? He's in this million dollar debt, and he's forgiven that debt. It's right. a huge debt that there's no way he could pay. And then his ingratitude, going out and um, getting that much, much smaller debt, but at the end of that parable, he doesn't go to hell, he goes to jail <laughs> until he pays the last cent of his debt. So he's still uh, saved, you know, he's still going to, to see the Lord, mm -hmm. but he's, because of his ingratitude, so um, yeah, it's because he hasn't opened himself up and allowed himself to, to feel that humble gratitude. And let me, if I could just put you, I'm, I'm conscious yeah. of time, and I want to honor time, so I'm just going to make one final comment to kind of wrap it all up. Um, going back to that 70 times 7 stuff, you know, um, that Jesus teaches. We can all do the math. It's 490, right? So that means Jesus wants us to keep score. Right? No, St. Paul tells us not to keep score, because that's a really lousy way to conduct yourself in a relationship. Right? How do we understand that? Uh, there are a lot of numbers in the Bible that have very particular significance. Seven is one of them. Okay? Seven is equated with perfection, and perfection is equated with, with God. Okay? And so seven is a number, you know, we have... You know, seven reappears all the time um, in, in the scriptures. So when Jesus is saying, I want you to forgive 70 times, seven times, he's not saying, I want you to forgive someone 490 times. He says, I want those who follow me.
to forgive as the Father forgives. And there's no way that we can forgive as the Father forgives without the help of the Father's grace. Um, so I'll leave it on that note because it is 3 o'clock, right? And we're done at 3, right? Um, well, that's what the schedule says, but it could, that could be fake news. <laughs> oh, well, I don't want to engage in fake in fake news. There's um, we'll forgive you. So, um, but, so um, we got a few extra minutes if you want, but that's up to you and, and the group. Well, let me. There were I know there were a few. Why don't we take a few questions? Because then I am afraid I need to scoot back to the other side of the river. We're having uh, a bunch of us are meeting for mass at five o'clock and then I'm leaving on vacation with my family tomorrow morning and I have it packed and I've got to do the laundry and we got to bring up the, you know, all that kind of good um, stuff. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Um, and for anyone who's interested, I have a few copies of my, of my book. Um, but in, any, any questions, comments? The last statement you made is the explanation of the line in the Our Father. We're not asking God to forgive us as we're doing it. We're trying to, we're asking Him to let us forgive as He forgives us. So we're asking for the grace yes. to forgive. It's just like the line that says, lead us not to temptation. Yeah. We're not saying you're going to lead us into temptation. Right. What we're saying is, don't let us think we're doing your will when we're doing evil. And Sharon, I wish you'd heard that because he just, no, it was really good talking about the petition in the Our Father, um, really, it's you know, it's a question of, for, you know, as we for, forgive others as you forgive us. It's like an appeal: give us the grace to forgive as you forgive. That's seventy times seven times. Because without your help, we can't do it. Because we would rather make other choices. Um, yes, please. I, I just, I just love that phrase too, because Jesus did not say. Forgive us our trespasses if we forgive those who trespass no. against us. So, ah, so it's a concurrent relational fluid thing in which we're in partnership with God in the process of forgiveness together that we can't do by ourselves. Mm -hmm. But the as makes it very much a bigger, more bountiful act of empowerment rather mm -hmm. than if you do this, then you'll earn my forgiveness. It's very transactional. It's not and so I see I and thank you because I like to make this point because so many people think it is transactional. Mm -hmm. And what does that do to your understanding of God? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm wrestling with forgiving this person who has hurt me so much. There are days I think I'm making progress. There are days I'm not. Oh, gee, I'm hurting enough and then now God's ticked off at me. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and we don't want a person to be in that situation. We want them to cling to the Lord and experience and process all that they need to experience and process. Understand that God is is enfolding them in His love and encouraging them along the way with patience, as opposed to sitting back aloof with arms folded, tapping His shoe until we get it together. Now, oh, good job. Now I'll forgive you. You, you, know, you know what I mean? It's very simplistic, but that, that's, a, that's a dynamic that some people wrestle with, and it's not a helpful one in their coming to an understanding of God's love. Well, there's just another thing about that phrase, too, one being the as and not the if, which changes so much, but also forgive those who trespass against us. Not trespass did against us, right. but who, who may be in the very act of malicious intent and just getting ready for their next crack at us. Mm. Um, and then again, that's a very different type of, type of forgiveness in a situation of danger where we need to flee from a predator or we need to engage in legal prosecution against an adversary that, you know, it's very real time Forgiveness, not sort of, okay, that's over now. Now I can forgive you because I'm okay. It's, it's to forgive somebody who's you know, already right. has no goodwill toward us. And so to forgive. It does imply being, an active process, doesn't it? God, this is going to take a while, you know. 
um, let's take this journey together. And not only are they not sorry, but they'll, they'll you know, they're, they're and they really, might never be. Right. And Wait. not, but not only that, but they intend to do us harm with the next right. to that. Right. Be safe, don't wait for the karma bus. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Karma is not part of our theological tradition. I think you all know what I've been talking about. You know, that understanding that, oh, well, they've, you know, they've done this to me. Well, they're going to get their come up and some, well, that's not, it's not our, that's that's not our yeah. yeah, put that in God's hands. Yeah. yeah. I would like to recommend Scott's book, though. I use it all the time, and it's a, it's a great read, and it kind of answers all these questions. Have they had a chance to be introduced to your association and what you do? Um, a, a little bit, but we'll take care of it more tomorrow. Oh, so you have your opportunity to... So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give a plug right now for Catholics for Family Peace, other than please pay attention to what Sharon says tomorrow because her, her ministry is so so vitally um, important. So God bless. Thank you. Stay dry.